Good morning my friends, it's Roger today on the hunt for some more fun stuff and again finding fun stuff everywhere. Now, this is a Crooks radiometer. This guy is uh, from Applied Science, I believe is the channel. Very, very good guy. Applied Science, yeah. And I've watched a ton of his stuff. Very, very good stuff. Really do I dis... Well, now I'm disagreeing with everything because I've discovered that everything's wrong. He's more of a mainstream guy. And he gives excellent detail of why they believe these things. But I, I understand why it's wrong. <laughs> so let's see what he has to say and I will tell you why it is wrong. All right, here goes. Something to do with the photons themselves. So the photons that are emitted by the light bulb hit the radiometer and it's actually the momentum of the photons that cause it to spin. However, look more closely, as you can see, it's actually the black face that's trailing, meaning that there's more force on the black face than there is on the white face of the radiometer veins. Now if we think about the photons coming out of here, they would actually be reflected off the white sides and absorbed on the black sides. So that would mean that they're actually delivering more force to the white faces and it would cause it to spin the other way. So the explanation that light pressure causes this radiometer to spin is actually completely wrong. It would spin the other way if it were true. Now there is such a thing as light pressure. Uh, it's a very, very small effect. Uh, something like a 50 watt laser produces maybe about 17 micrograms force of pressure of force on, on a vein like this and the amount of force that's being generated inside there is actually much higher that causes it to spin. So there must be some other explanation for its movement. So let's try something else. Now this is great, watch this. I've this let is the this radiometer why I like this come guy. to rest by itself and I'm going to spray some of this on it. This is a canned air duster which is actually a refrigerant and what I'm going to do is tip it upside down and spray some of the refrigerant on the glass envelope of the radiometer. Now notice there's no more light. There's no and more as you applied can see, light. It's actually spinning backwards relative to the way that it was spinning when we shined the light bulb on it. So clearly there is something else going on here. If it were just a photon effect, making the glass envelope cold would not cause it to spin backwards because we aren't pulling photons out that way. Yes, we are. That's what they're missing. We are pulling photons off of the black, I mean off of the white, because the white is saturated with photons to begin with. That's why it doesn't want any more photons. White re rejects photons. Black says, give me all the photons you can give me and I will keep them and hold them inside of me as heat. That means you have increased the mass of the black, therefore you have mob pushed it. And I will show you this. As you might have guessed, the effect is thermal, and it does require that there be some gas in the radiometer envelope. If there were no gas at all inside here, then the only thing that could touch the rotor and make it spin would be the photons shining on it. And we've determined that can't be right because the photons would be making it spin the other way. All right, now I am going to explain why that is incorrect. And again, I love this guy, but here's the problem. When he turns on that vacuum, all the particles in here which are occupying space and holding electrons get sucked out of here. So you have nothing in here. So the, they, cannot, they cannot interact with the, there's no, there's no reason to, to, to work with the electrons in here because it's already missing everything in the, in the entire dome. All right, he's going to make a statement that's, that says, we know uh, that the vacuum pump can't affect this, but really what is, it's doing the exact same thing as this. The vacuum pump pulls all of the particles out from the environment surrounding this whole thing. Cold pulls all the particles out, all of the um, electrons or, or, or photons out from wherever you can get them from. Now, it takes them from the white because the white has the excess. The black wants photons. The white says, I got plenty of photons. You want some? I'll give some up. And it gives them up and it pushes away. Now the white starts to turn this way because the white now is pushing the electrons out. I mean the photons. Now, what happens when you suck in the vacuum? 
there's nothing to push against. There's no. Everybody says, well, you know, I got electrons. You want them? Just I'll just flow right over to you. There's no problem. I'm not going to push them away. You're just going to suck them off of me. And if it it, it it creates a stability because everybody is looking for electrons because it's pulled everything out of the chamber that contained electrons, literally, or and, and photons. So you lose the interaction is really what happened. It's the interaction between particles that exist there and want to occupy that space and other particles that are coming and going. That's the problem. That's interaction. Once you remove everything and there is nothing to interact with, it just doesn't do anything. It just the the electrons come and go to wherever they want without having any big effect to make anything move is what it boils down to. There's some movement, but there's not, not enough to make that thing spin. Alright, this is from the Venturi experiments. Red laser accelerated through a Venturi creating Higgs fields. This is a new particle that's unknown. Now these are light particles, so they're the smallest particles apparently they say. Now this, I believe, is the actual photon right there that I was just talking about. This is what it is. It's one of these. Alright? Now, here's the issue. You have an, a positive and negative, a positive and negative. So they're back to back, so they end up having a neutral charge. One of them would have a positive and negative, just like a bar magnet, so this becomes highly reactive. Now, if I put this together with that, it either can go that way, or if I snap it down here, it can snap sideways. You see it? Now, if I turn these back to back, what's the difference? If this one turns around this way, I don't know. But I do know that they are, this is what we see. And that's coming right out of the accelerator. After acceleration, this is the acceleration up here. And as they come out and they start to slow down, they become visible just for two different cycles. And then they, you know, it's like a wagon wheel as it slows down the old westerns. It stops and then it goes back the other way. I don't know what to say. That's what we see. And that appears to be the situation. So stay tuned. We're going to get deep into this because I'm doing the, all the numbers and how much it takes of electron volts and what the angstrom units are that the you know, it, it jumps away from the nucleus and what the wavelengths are related to the, you know, the whole thing. It's, it's a complex, it's very complex. But it's, um, it does seem to be taken on, on, on a pretty obvious pattern. So I'm going to pursue that. It's, it's certainly not the way they are portraying it. Absolutely not. And once you, you know, I took a course in, in a uh, University of Geneva about all these particles, particle physics. And uh, all they are is the little bitty ones which I showed you going up all the way up to till they get big chunks and smashing into you. That's what hurts you, is the bigger chunks. And they hit things so hard that they drive off chunks that we can't see. They're not in a visible spectrum anymore. So, that's it for today. Thanks. Mudfiles University. Thumb it up. Talk it up. Let's get some reality out there and get some discussion going. Now, I'm not saying this is all factual. I don't know. It's what I see. All right, so now that that's my assessment of what he's going to say here, listen to what he does have to say, because he's got some high-tech gear, man. I'm telling you, it's amazing. It's out that way. As you might have guessed, the effect is thermal, and it does require that there be some gas in the radiometer envelope. If there were no gas at all inside here, then the only thing that could touch the rotor and make it spin would be the photons shining on it. And we've determined that can't be right because the photons would be making it spin the other way. See, that, that right there is my, my you know, um, problem with what he's saying. Because he says we've already determined this. No, we haven't. We haven't determined anything yet other than the fact that the black absorbs electron, uh, elect photons, the white rejects them. That means the white already has enough and the black wants them. The black fills up with weight and it's mob pushed where this one just ding, 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 they go flying off. Now I drew up a little thing here to explain what I have to say and I think it does you know, a pretty good job of explaining what we we're looking at here. Now, Let's focus in on this here. All right. There's the Crookes radiometer. 
you can see that we're shining light on it. And these on the white side, it's boing, 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 they go flying away. Well, they stick to the black, just like you were shooting Velcro balls. And one side didn't have any Velcro to stick to, and the other had Velcro. And bing, 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 bing. This is going to move. That one's going to move. This is going to bounce off. So that accounts for the black normal spinning. So the black absorbs light. The black wants photons. The black side is mob pushed. That's why right. it's just standard. So and that's when it's warm, shining light on. Now you saw when he sprayed cold on there. So cold with no extra light spins backwards. Well, why does that happen? Well, white is already full of photons. So that can't emit any. It doesn't want any, and it won't emit any. It just bounces them away. Stay away from me. So the white rejects photons. The white is lightly pushed. Okay. In the cold, though, the black has no extra photons to emit. So in the cold, the black simply absorbs less. All right. So the cold pushes the black absorbs less so the, the I mean the uh, white pushes the black doesn't so now you got the white shooting out a lot of photons because it had a whole bunch and the, and the cold says I'd like to have some of this is okay ping 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 it shoots them out into the cold the white starts to turn only in the cold no extra light if you shine light on it it would stop it I guarantee you in the cold, white has excess photons. It has excess photons in the cold. It's always had a lot of excess cold photons. So in the cold, it says, all right, if you want some, I will emit some, and therefore the photons push away from the white plates and reverse. It's as simple as that. It's not a big thing to figure this out. Now, again, the guy that uh, is doing these videos, and all these guys, Verita uh, Veritasium, I think it is, and and applied science and uh, oh there's a bunch of them they do fabulous fabulous work I, I'm not belittling anybody I'm just saying that now that there's a new way to look at particles and light and and the photons and the three different actual particle sizes and and I, I'm gonna just finish up by showing you my light pictures one more time and explaining to you why this is important and, and why it's factual <laughs>